Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm taking this stamp from My Favorite Things. This is the You Are So Loved stamp, and I'm going to be using it as sort of the, the basis for my card design. But when I saw this stamp, it has such beautiful lettering on it. I thought to myself, I wonder if I could trace that with pigment markers and uh, kind of change the look of it a little bit. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to be using some No Line Coloring Hybrid Ink from Honey Bee, and I'm, stamp I'm going to stamp this large greeting in the center of this cardstock. This is an A2 size card that I'm creating today, and for now, this is just the front of the card. It is not a folded card at this point. So now I'm going to take out my Karen markers. These are the pigment deco brush markers. So it's almost like an acrylic paint in a marker. So that's how I can, you know, put these right on top of a darker surface. I'm using about four or five different colors. And these are so fun to work with. I don't think I've worked with them since I did that holographic envelope a while back. I mean, I've used them here or there, but not in a video. And this idea just really stuck with me about kind of tracing the lettering. I do this quite a bit with my own lettering. I'll use a pencil and I'll trace out the words or the person's name or whatever I want to do. And then I'll just go right over it with one of these very opaque markers. It's a super easy way to sort of quote unquote cheat and make it look like you did not need some sort of guidance while you were uh, doing the lettering, but no one ever can tell that that's what happened. So it's a really fun technique that I use all the time. And uh, just by using a stamp first, it's a similar technique, but it means that like anyone who can stamp can do it. So it's kind of fun. So like I said, I'm using a bunch of different colors, kind of switching back and forth. And the trick with these markers is that they should be pretty thick and opaque, but if they're not, go ahead and put that cap back on and shake up the marker a little bit more. Some of them are more opaque than others. That bright red that I use on the word you at the very beginning, I think that's one of my most favorite colors. And I think it's called True Fire, True Fire Red or something like that. It's one of my favorites. You're going to see it quite a bit over the next few videos as I play with these markers some more. So after I had that initial kind of tracing done, I decided to swap out that mid-tone pink for this brighter pink. I think it reads a little bit more clearly. And so I'm just going right over the top. That's what's really fun about these markers is that if you make a mistake or want to change a color, you can go right over the top because it is a lot like acrylic paint. And so after I had all of these letters kind of done, I decided to add a shadow. So I'm using a light gray marker from Zebra. This is a mild liner brush uh, marker. And I'm just adding a little bit of a shadow around all of these letters. It's going to give them a little bit more dimension. And also on the very light colored words, it gives them a little bit more of an outline. So they're just a little bit more legible. So I'm going around and just adding all of those shadows. And this is a really, really fun part. And I think it starts to make things look a whole lot more dimensional and finished. Now at this point, I decided to add some white details onto the lettering and then that wasn't enough. So you'll actually see here in a little bit that I'm covering up the hearts. I decided to swap out some of the pink hearts for some white and I'm gonna add some little dots here and there, just filling in some of those gaps, uh, really customizing it to how I want it to look. And then I decided to put a dash line around the outside edge. That uh, greeting, the whole lettering area is quite small in comparison to the card. So just adding this border, it's about a half inch from the edge, just adding this dash line border really sets it off and makes it look almost like an art piece. I think it looks really neat this way. So my card is pretty much done at this point. I'm just adding a few little details. I'm adding a little white heart off on the side and then I'll have to grab that gray marker and add a little bit of shadow on that heart since all the other hearts have that shadow. So I'll go ahead and add that in. 
And then, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is just the front of the card. So I adhered it to a card base. So I have a white card base now and I've adhered my design on the front. So this card was super, super simple. I decided to go ahead and make an envelope that goes along with it. So I've got an envelope here. This one is from Paper Source. This is their, I think they call it paper bag. Is that the color name? I can't remember. I've got some masking tape here. I'm gonna mask off the front of the envelope and I'm going to completely coat the entire flap of this envelope with that bright red color. The one that I mentioned is my favorite. It's such a bright, vibrant red, and um, it just goes on so smoothly. So I'm very methodically just coloring all the way across this flap. My idea was that uh, the front of the envelope would mostly be the craft color, but then you'd have this fun decorated flap on the back of the envelope. So that's all completely right. I'm going to come back to that flap here in a little bit. Uh, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put my friend Dana's name on the front of the envelope. I'm doing some very simple lettering here, just some capital letters. And I'm also going to speed up the video footage just because it can get a little long here while I'm deciding how I want to write these letters. So I'm putting this on, just adding some little serifs. And then I'm going to switch to a different color. I'm going to switch to that bright pink and I'm going to put her last name. Doesn't she have a great name? Dana Joy. So wonderful. So I've added that on and then I'm going to do some uh, red lines um, around the bottom that I'm actually eventually going to put her address on. But, you know, for the sake of her privacy, I'm not going to put her address on in this video. I'll do it after. I've finished with the video completely. So I'm just adding those red lines and I actually just used a white jelly roll pen to add her street address. It worked great on top of that red, those red bars that I created with the marker. So um, I'm going to take my white gel pen and add some little dots on her name. And I'm going to add dots like from the half point of the capital letters going down on the thickest areas. And then I added a little line going down to the dot. So I'm taking that same gray marker and I'm adding the same shadows that I did for the lettering on the card. And this just gives it a little bit more dimension. And I'm going to be adding the shadow to absolutely everything on the front of this envelope. I'm going to be adding it to her name plus those red bars at the bottom. I'm gonna add the shadow to that as well. And that's going to help everything stand out. So after I had all of the shadows applied, even on those bars at the bottom, then I grabbed my white gel pen and I wanted to add a few more little details around her name. So I added a few more little hearts, kind of mimicking the look that's on the card itself. And, um, and then I'm going to start working on the actual red flap of the envelope because that one's going to be a little bit more involved. My idea for the flap on the envelope is polka dots. And I thought about doing some really big gold polka dots, or maybe some big white polka dots. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, but I'm going to use the I Like Small Dots 6x9 stencil from Simon. I don't know why it's called I Like Small Dots because these are pretty big. <laughs> but I turned over the envelope and taped the stencil to the envelope from the underside. And then I, at first I thought I'd just go ahead and use my white gel pen and trace those dots. But then I decided to make it a little bit easier on myself and first trace them in a pencil. And after all of the dots were traced with the pencil, then I came back with my jelly roll pen and just added some outline dots. And I thought about filling them in, but eventually decided not to try that because it would be a lot of coloring in all of those circles. So instead of uh, having all the circles filled in with white, I grabbed another one of the markers. This time I picked that light pink once again, and I decided to just put some cute little hearts in the center of the circles, just on two of them. So it looks a little bit more random. 
And I think that really adds to the playful nature of this Valentine's Day card and envelope set. And they all look like they kind of go together. I think it looks really, really fun. So I added some postage stamps. I have so many lovely red and pink toned postage stamps that went well with this. And I also uh, put a dash line around the outer edge to mimic the dash line on the card. And I put my PO box up there in the return address area. And then, like I said before, I will put Dana's street address in those red boxes after I'm done with the video. So thank you so much for watching today. If you want to create something like this, look through your stash, look for these kind of lettered greetings that you could possibly stamp on your card and then go over it with um, either some markers that have like an opaque paint like these or even some gouache or pearlescent paints. Anything that's opaque that would go over those areas and, and look nice and thick. Thanks so much for watching today. I will be back very soon with another video. I'm going live on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, so please join me back here at YouTube.